Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive. Got my shiny, clean, yeah, I did wash the Tacoma yesterday. And real quick, a footnote, somebody sent me a comment and said, I thought you didn't ever have to wash it, Rob, because of a video that I put out. That doesn't mean you never wash it. I do like a clean truck. I just hate washing it. And actually, it might actually be better for the paint to not do it. But anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk about today. Today, I was kind of looking around the Tacoma at some of the mods and things that I've done and some things that I'm looking to do. And I thought, you know, there are about six mods that I can come up with that you really should avoid, that I shouldn't have done myself because all of them turned out to be either a problem or disappointing. So let's run through them. The first one I just talked about recently and that was, or those were, valve stem covers, the steel aftermarket kind. You know, I put those on and they started to meld to adhere to the steel or the metal rather that's part of the valve stem now. And it's because of a reaction between the aluminum aftermarket caps that I bought and I think the copper or whatever the material is in the existing valves. Everything started to corrode and I actually had to use a pair of pliers to twist them off. Uh, definitely a mistake on my part. I certainly am not going to put something on that's going to damage something like a valve stem because then you start to get into the sensors. And those can be anywhere from 45 to 90 bucks a piece. Definitely not worth a 3 or $4 valve stem. Wouldn't do that again. Highly recommend just staying with the plastic ones. Some folks have suggested using grease or something like that. If you're going to do that and it's to stop the corrosion, I would go with lithium grease. I think that's the best one you can use, but whatever works for you. Next up, a cheapo train horn. You know, I went through the train horn phase where I thought I need to have a train horn in my Tacoma. I still like them. I think they're pretty cool, you know, nice and loud. If anybody gets in your way, they're never going to not know you're there once you hit that thing. But I bought a cheap one. I think it cost me less than 30 bucks, probably less than 25. I put it in and at first it worked great. It was loud, it was awesome. But then everything started to go bad. It started to corrode all of the fasteners, the bolts and stuff. And then the hose wouldn't stay on anymore. You know, it has a little air hose that goes to a little mini air tank, compressor, whatever you want to call it. That fell off, and of course, without that being connected, all you're doing is blowing air out of a tube. You never make it to the horn. The horn itself started to rust. I mean, it was just bad all the way around, and it's the sign of a really cheap product, I think. And obviously, at under 25 bucks, it was a pretty darn cheap product. Not to say that I don't like them. I still do like them. I may put something else on eventually uh, of a little better quality, but definitely stay away from the cheap train horns. They're not worth it. Next up, the lift. This wasn't on this particular truck. I had put what I had intended to be a leveling lift on my Voodoo Blue Tacoma. Uh, it ended up pushing the front up higher than the rear. It looked like I was trying to blast off in that thing, kind of a Baja looking truck. I didn't dig the look. That's part of the fail. One of the reasons to avoid it if you're going or avoid going anything bigger than three inches if you're going for a level look. Now, as I mentioned, I was trying to go three. I was trying to get a level look. It was a block and spacer lift. It ended up netting about three and a half inches. That caused geometry problems underneath, particularly the CV axle made such a severe angle on that thing that it actually tore the boot. When that happened, all of the grease and the oil inside, or I guess it's primarily grease, leaked out all over the place. That means that I was running a dry CV axle on that side. Obviously would have caused problems down the road with four wheel drive. Uh, I didn't have the truck or don't have the truck anymore, so it's not an issue. And I actually didn't even discover it until I think the day before I was looking to trade it off, only because I removed the skid plate that I had put on and saw a bunch of grease underneath. It's definitely something to make sure, not necessarily avoid, 
I mean, you can lift the truck. You just need to make sure that you accommodate that angle so that you don't cause any problems like that or with any other suspensions under the truck or suspension parts, I should say. Next up, the WeatherTech in-channel uh, rain guards or vents, I guess, these kind of things. You notice I have AVS now. I went with WeatherTech before and the fit just wasn't as good or didn't seem to be as the AVS are. These are in-channel. They have adhesive on the backside. They stick against your rubber molding in here and they work perfectly. They're also, I think, the lower profile of the two. But the problem that I had is the way the WeatherTechs fit, they pushed out on this trim piece here. It would kind of bow out. That obviously could cause leakage. I mean, the whole reason you have this part here, this rubber seal, is to keep water and snow or whatever ice out of the inside. Uh, it bowed out here. It didn't look good. Aesthetically, it was a problem for me, obviously. I would avoid those. If you're going to go with these type of uh, vents or rain guards, I would make sure to go with the AVS. They fit better in my opinion. They're not quite as expensive, if I recall, as the WeatherTechs were, and you're not going to have that bowing problem that you can get in that rubber piece. Next up, the OEM roof rack. I went with an OEM roof rack. And if you look up here on my left, right over there in the corner, you can see that's where it sits. I had that on my previous truck. Ultimately, I removed it, obviously, and went with a Prinsu roof rack. Now, I'm not pushing Prinsu. I do think they're really good. Uh, any aftermarket, uh, more substantial roof rack is better than the OEM version. The OEM does not have a, a really good weight capacity to it. I I can't remember the exact numbers, but it was pretty low as I recall. You might get a really light uh, kayak or something up there. Uh, capacity on the Prinsu, a heck of a lot more. Uh, you can put a tent or something up there on the Prinsu, I believe. Also, the versatility of it. You couldn't really do much more with the OEM rack, but with something like the Prinsu, I could put lights, front, back, sides, drill holes to put other things in it all kinds of different things, tie down, stuff like that. You're gonna spend quite a bit more money, but in the end, you're only gonna spend it once and you're gonna have some kind of a rack that's gonna be much more useful than what the OEM version is. Next up, the aftermarket exhaust. The dreaded aftermarket exhaust. You know, I put one again on my previous Tacoma, not this one, I learned, and all I got was a lot of noise. Droning, uh, I could hear it all the time. I shouldn't say droning. That one didn't really drone a lot. I just heard it all the time. Didn't really care for that. There really is no good compromise that I've come across anyway for the Toyota Tacoma because of the V6 engine. You're not going to get that nice throaty, grumbly sound out of an exhaust on a Toyota Tacoma. It's just not going to happen. If you want something a little bit more profound, louder in the truck, highly recommend going with the K&N, the intake. It's not really a cold air intake. It's just an intake because it's open. But I am really impressed at the sound that I get out of that. It's not overbearingly loud all the time. I mean, you can hear it. and You can hear it when you get on the gas. But it's pleasant. It's a good sound. Anyway, I just wanted to run through as I was kind of thinking myself, six Tacoma mods to avoid or maybe go with something different than what I've done in the past. Don't make the mistakes that I've made. Uh, save yourself a little bit of frustration and money. Leave a comment. Let me know. What do you have that you've done that you wouldn't recommend so that we other modders out there know what to avoid? I'd be curious to know. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.